our Bibles to the book of 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2. And we'll look, we're going to look at one verse, very familiar verse. Verse that many of us have memorized. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. The title of the message is A Christian Workman. A Christian Workman. Verse 15. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Brother Jake, can you pray for the message? Yes, Father, we thank you once again for being so good to us, protecting us past one week and allowing us to gather together in this place to lift our voices up to you in praise and to listen to your word. We ask you, Lord, that you'll protect us from devil's attacks, help us not to have wandering minds, help us to just wholly submit our minds, hearts, and ears to your word. We ask you that you'll be the only one who will receive the glory and honor. Lord Jesus Christ, we ask you that you'll fill Pastor Jay with your Holy Spirit. Amen. Protect them, show them with your blood, and help them to speak your word with clarity and with power and authority directly from you, and open our hearts, minds, and ears to your word. Help us to hide your words in our hearts so that we will not sin against you. For those who are able to come for whatever reason, be with them. Help them to make next time. And for those who are watching, uh, listening online, pray that you'll be with them. Uh, protect them and uh, bless them. We thank you and love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 A Christian workman. Workman is someone that works. And as a Christian, you are to work. One thing that you can't be is a lazy person. As a Christian, to do anything for the Lord. And this is something that we've heard over and over and over. Study, study. And for some, study is fun. Very few. But for some, or most, majority, study is not fun. You'd rather just do something else, anything other than study. Especially kids going through their college days, or worse, high school days, preparing for college, and trying to get into you know, school of their choice, they have to study. They have to study hard. And I'm pretty sure their goal in life is to get out of school one day and not study. However, the Word of God says otherwise. It says, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And this is imperative because it is a command. It's not a choice that you have. You know, it's not something you say, I want to do my best. You know, what is your best? I don't know what your best is. You could say, you know what? My best is that because I'm so busy in life, I study once a week. I'm so hurt or I'm so weak that I study once every two weeks. So your definition of doing your best it's not going to work when it comes to study. Study to show thyself approved unto God. You want to be approved unto God, then you need to study. I mean, if you, want, if you want God to approve you, you know, there are a lot of phases in your life that you want God to approve you. But one thing is doing study. You have to study the scriptures. There are many, 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 many reasons, but one of the main reasons that Christians don't grow is what? They don't get into the book. Yeah. I mean, many people could have gotten saved at a young age, but they never grow. The main reason is why? Because they don't get into book. Amen. They don't study the word of God. Yes. Like you as a, you know, let's go to second, in the first Peter chapter two, verse two. First Peter chapter two, verse two. One 
1 Peter chapter 2, verse 2. The Bible says, As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that ye may grow thereby. In order for you to grow, you need to have some meat and milk and all these nutrients. And where are you going to get that? You're going to get from the Word of God. Amen. If you don't get into the book, just forget about growing as a Christian. You're going to be where you are, or worse. I mean, if, if a baby doesn't get his or her nutrients regularly, what happens? They're going to become weak. Look at all these third world countries, or even here, where people live in you know, poverty, where they don't have food to eat. What happens? They become weak, they become malnutrition, and they become sick. Yes. So many of Christians today, maybe it's you, you're sick. Why? Because you don't grow. You haven't grown. You don't give yourself the nutrients that you need spiritual food. So what happens? You become sick and sick. You let your old nature become bigger and bigger. And your new nature, new you, is becoming weaker and weaker and weaker. If you want to get stronger, you have to, you have to work for it. If you want to you know, become a better runner, you have to practice running. If you want to become a you know, better jumper, you have to practice jumping. I mean, if you want to you know, do more weights, you have to start doing more weights. If you want to go further, you have to work on it. And as Christians, you have to examine yourself today, you know, this morning, and see where I am today when it comes to studying the Word of God. If you never get into Scripture and you never grow, you're going to be those folks, you know, when we go out on visitation, we knock on doors, and this is a gentleman comes with a beer in his hand, you know, and start talking to you. And he goes, you know what, you know, I went to church, you know, when I was young, you know, my parents took me to church, you know, I got saved, I'm saved, you know, I accepted Christ as my Lord and Savior. And, but, you know, he's got a beer in his hand, you have some, you know, loud TV going on in the background, you know. You know, some people might say, you know, this guy, you know, he can't be saved, you know. No, you know, I believe a lot of people are saved. It's just that they never grow. Yeah. Yeah, so one, when you don't grow, what's going to happen? You're going to do many things that your flesh wants to do, which is drinking, which is smoking, you know, which is doing drugs, uh, you know, all these lustful sins, you know, fornication, adultery. You know, all these things are going to happen. But you're saved. You know? But you're saved, child of God, but you're still doing this. But what's the reason you're still doing this? Because you never grew. You're just not growing. Why? Because you don't get into the book. Because you're not obeying God's command. Yes. Right? Study to show thyself, approve unto God. As a Christian, I think the best thing that could happen to you, and as a Christian, where you want to be is being the will of God, and being approved by God. Amen. You know, when, when a kid is approved by their parents, they're very happy. And especially if they have a close relationship. Mommy, I got an A in my spelling bee, right? And mommy's really happy. Daddy, I got it. And daddy's happy. And then they go, I approve you. I mean, they don't say it like that. You know, but their face shows. Their action shows. You know, and... You make your parents happy, and you're happy as well, because you, know, you make someone that you love happy. And in order for that to happen, you have to live an approved life. And when you look at that, you know, make a check mark, or if you could get a piece of paper and write some things that you do on a daily basis, like something that you do every single day. And it's going to include, like, you know, eating, going to work, and a bunch of other stuff. However, you're also going to include some of the things that, you know, you don't share with other people that you do on a daily basis. Something that you hide people, hide from people that you do on a daily basis or on a regular basis. 
Does that involve studying the Word of God? Probably not. You know, I'm pretty sure it's not something that you know you're gonna share with people. Right? Hey, brother, you know, tell me something that we don't know about you that you do on a daily basis. You're like, are you gonna be like, oh yeah, man, I, I study the Word of God. You know, I study the Word of God. You know, I go to you know, our YouTube channel. You know, go through our discipleship. I listen to many preachings. I study scriptures. That's what I do. Or are you going to be the one who'll be like, oh yeah, you know, it's just between you and me. Uh, I do like a lot of, you know, social media stuff where I spend my hours and hours, you know, doing YouTube stuff, you know, some other social media stuff, Facebook or, you know, TikTok or whatnot. I mean, is that really studying? You know, is that really valuing God's time? Everybody hears. You and I, we could hear. But how many of you guys actually do? I mean, everyone who's listening, I mean, are you a doer? Or are you just a hearer? Turn your Bibles to James chapter 1, verse 22. As you listen to God's you know, message, as you read the Word of God, you actually have to put, into, put in some action now. Be a workman. Be a Christian workman. You know, no more just lazy Christian, just sitting down on your butt or, you know, just lying down and just having your phone and just browsing and needlessly, endlessly just wasting your time looking at those, you know, worthless videos over and over. Just study. James chapter 1. James chapter 1. Verse 22. But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. As they say, right? You know, they say, talk the talk, walk the walk. You know? In this case, as you hear, you have to do. You have to be doers of the word. Amen. And I'm pretty sure people go by it. There are very few people who, who's their character is special, where they say it and they just do it. I mean, are you that type of person? Now, I love to be your friend because it's hard to find people who say, you know, I'm going to do this, and you do it almost all the time. I'm going to wake up at 6 every day, not because of work, because you want to because you want to wake up early and spend time in the Word of God. I'm going to pray every night on my knees because you want to spend more time with the Lord. I'm going to pass out tracts at every opportunity. I'm going to witness at every opportunity. And when those opportunities come, if you are a doer, you're going to do it. But if you're not, you're not going to do it. You're just a hearer. When it comes to studying the Word of God, you have to do it. It's not something that you, know, you can't live without. It's like food. Can you and me live without food for long periods of time? It's like water. Can we go a few days without water? No, we have to be hydrated. And spiritually speaking, you have to study. And as a workman, you must study. That's number one thing. It's not no if and buts. You have to study the scriptures. You have to get in the book. It's like something that, you know, when you're out there, when worldly music's playing, and it's keep on going through your head, you know, get rid of that and just have 2 Timothy 2.15, keep on playing. Let that music play on your head. Study to show thyself a prudent to God. Study, study to show thyself a prudent to God. Study, study, study. Because how much time or how many hours do you put on getting into the scripture on a daily basis? I mean, how many of you guys actually open the word of God on a daily basis? Not just for your Bible reading. 
that three chapters that you read or some of them you are forced to read or some of you like to read, I mean, read because you don't want to get embarrassed in front of the people. We're not talking about any of those. How many of you guys actually, you know, open this book, this precious book, you know, Perfect Word of God, King James Bible, 1611. How many of you guys on a daily basis, set a time, opens this book, you know, read, study, make notes, and watch, you know, commentaries or preachings, Bible studies on topics, and actually grow in the Word of God on a daily basis. If it's not daily, even on a regular basis, every other day, because it's very lacking in Christians' lives. Because time goes by very fast. You ask anybody, time goes by super fast. Today is October 24th. This is the 297th day of the year. 297th day. Out of 297, how many days did you actually study the Word of God? I'm not talking about coming to church. Out of those 297 days, how many days did you actually study the Word of God? You set a time and you study the Word of God. Shouldn't it be almost every single day? I mean, as a saved Christian, saved by the blood of Jesus, you know, you shout out, amen, I'm saved. And you go out there, and then inside, you're so happy you're going to heaven. But shame on you. You're just talk only. You just hear only. But you don't do anything. Out of 297, think about it. Out of 297 days, did you even pass? What's passing? 60%? Did you even study for 60% out of 297? It's about, you know, close to 180 days. So half of the year, so actually not half of the year, six months, do you think that you went to the book, you got into the book and study like you should? Which means on a weekly basis, seven days in a week, do you, did you study at least four times? Four days out of seven days studying? I, I'm going to say it, and you know, I'm going to go out on a limb. I'm going to say almost all of you did not. Almost all of you. I, like two or three, you know, maybe, you know, maybe 10%, 15 I mean, that's, that's really being generous. Maybe, you know, there are people who do study. But for majority, you do not study. For majority, you neglect the Word of God. For majority, your Bible is something that you touch only when you go to church. And that is the sad part. We have a bunch of, you know, CEO Christians out there, right? Christmas is their only Christians. You know, and, but not even that. You know, they don't even show up anymore because they just say, okay, I watch through the you know, TV or Internet. <laughs> but you're not one of those, hopefully not. At least you're here today, so you're not. Then, if you take it seriously, out of those 297 days, and if you know for sure that majority, you've been failing this thing, you've been failing this class, you've been failing in front of God, you're not being approved as a Christian workman, then you have to change your ways. Don't be hearers only. You've got to become doers for a change. Do something in your life, right? I'm sure kids hear it from their parents, right? Especially, you know, as you're growing up, you're not doing well at school, you know, nothing's going right, and uh, your parents lecture you, and they're like, hey, do something in your life. Be something in your life, right? And amazingly, you are something in life, right? You are a child of God if you accept Christ as your Lord and Savior. Then... You could do something for God. Do you realize that you could actually obey him? You could obey his commandments for change. I mean, your life doesn't have to be, you know, aimless. Your life doesn't have to be like every day, same thing, you know, and then you're like, oh, when would this, you know, misery end? You know, 
Like, even as a Christian, I think it's, it's uh, pitiful to see where you don't really have joy in your life because you're not living the life that God wants you to live. And it's just basic stuff, right? You pray, read your Bible, and study the Word of God. A simple things. However, how many of you guys actually do those things, those simple things? Like study, like pray, like witnessing. I mean, it's, it's lacking. Then, if you know for sure that you're failing right now, just be honest. Just be honest. You're failing. Because out of 297 days, if you haven't studied your Bible for 180 days, out of those, then you're failing. Right? Yes. Then, as a failure, you can learn from it. You have to admit. You know, I'm, I'm a failure. But because I'm a failure, I know I need to improve. I know I need to get right. I know I could do better. The last place you want to be is someone like, you know, I study the Word of God almost every day. My knowledge is well done up here where many of the people are like down there. Uh, they're here is only two in a sense that why? Because they only let the knowledge grow. They don't do it. If your knowledge grows in the Word of God, you need to become more of a doer because you know more things from the Word of God to do. You know how to treat other Christians. You know how to pray, right? You know some of the sins that you need to avoid. You know some of the things that you need to do. And you become deeper in the doctrine. And many of you guys, I believe you were gung-ho when you got saved because you were so happy. You know, you're like, wow, and I have this new eternal life. And then you hit the book, you study, but those days are long gone for some of you. It's been, like, it's such a distant memory that you need to get your VHS and trying to look for it and play it on some, you know, TV that you have to find at a thrifty store because you can't find it anymore. Then you have to, like, really, really, really rewind and come back to reality that, man, if I am a Christian workman, I need to work. I really need to. It's not something that I have a choice. And I don't want to be ashamed. A workman that needed not to be ashamed. Okay. What is, in Asian cultures especially, what's the worst thing that you can do? Bring shame to your family. I mean, literally. I mean, it's not just Asian, though. It's like, you know, I think a lot of Hispanic families, right? Like Italian families. You name it. You know, any family. What's the last thing you want to do? Bring shame to your family. That's why, you know, like when your child commits a murder and then you're branded as a murderer's father and mother, cousin, friends and stuff, it makes your life harder. And especially if that person who was a murderer have no remorse for it, and never change, then that's going to bring permanent shame to the family. But you, as a child of God, supposed Christian workman, bring shame to God's family every single day. I mean, literally every day, you bring shame after shame after shame. But the funny thing is, you don't even realize it. You backslid into the point it's like your conscience is seared with hot iron. You don't even care. It doesn't even affect you in any way. Word of God, so what? Preaching, so what? Bible study, so what? It's like you're like a robot. Like you have no feelings anymore. You know? And you don't really want to do anything for God. When you do something for God, there's still not joy. Because you're, you're at a state. You're like at a backslidden state. You're like a robot where nothing really moves you anymore. And that is a bad state to be in. You need to break that follow ground. You got to break it up. I mean, you have to become, you know, how should I say? You got to let some you know, rivers of water flow because it's so dried up. 
you know, California is going through a drought, right? That's your heart is. Your heart is just, you know, there's so many, it's, it's like it's been going through famine, drought for such a long time, and, and it's so dried up, it doesn't move you anymore. When for some, just hearing a verse from the word of God touches them so much, it breaks them down. It makes them go to, the, go to their knees and spend more time with the Lord and start thinking about people, start thinking about lost souls out there, start thinking about families, start thinking about pastors, churches, everybody. But for some, you will hear 100 verses and nothing moves. I'm like, okay, let me just go on my life again. Where do you fall right now? Are you that person where even a single word of the word of God moves you? Or are you that person where thousands of words of word of God doesn't move you much or even an inch? Then it just shows where you are. You don't study and you're disobeying God, you know, bluntly. You're like, Lord, you told me to study, but I'm not going to study. I mean, is that, a, is that an attitude that you should have towards an almighty God who saved you from hell? When Lord says, study to show thyself approved unto God? I mean, study. Man, if, if your mommy or your daddy told you to do something, and if you fear them, if you honor them, if you love them, you're going to do it. When God, who gave himself for you on the cross, says, told you to study, why don't you study? It's like, there's, there's not, it's not that hard to do, right? It's not something you have to go to, you know, some college and take a course on how to study the word of God, right? You know, it's not like you have to Google and it's like, oh, how to study, you know, the word of God. Do I need to get this degree, that degree? No. You just open the book, start reading, you know, with the right mind. And you could always go to you know, resources out there, commentaries out there. As we know, you know, Dr. Ruckman, you know, I mean, who practically, you know, preserved or God used to preserve his Bible, King James Bible in America, right, in the world. And we owe a lot to him. And thank God for a man like him. When he got saved, think about it. When he got saved, within one week, right, his mother-in-law sent him a Schofield reference Bible. He started reading the Bible. Within one week, so think about it, within one week, he got the word of God through his mother-in-law. He read four hours a day. Four hours a day, and within one year, he finished Bible from cover to cover 24 times within one year. So that man really studied the word of God well, without saying, right? I mean, I'm not saying you and I should be like Dr. Ruckman, right? I don't know, I mean, we could even come close. So like four hours a day, I forget about it, right? Even 10 minutes doesn't even work nowadays, right? Or many of you guys. So set a time, I mean, there are great examples, maybe in your life as well, where God has put you know, good people in your life, good Christians in your life, where you see him you know, studying the word of God, growing in the word of God, you know, admonishing, you know, edifying the brethren. You know, follow those examples and grow in the word of God. And number one thing they'll tell you is what? You have to study. I mean... It's something that you have to hear. You and I have to hear constantly because when we don't get reminded because our flesh and old nature are so strong, yes. we have to just hear over and over and over because, because you're lying down, you know, you're, you're at a couch, you know, when you go home today and you're going to have your phone on your hand and you're going to have a remote control on the other hand. You're watching something and Holy Spirit is convicting you. Yes. Hey, 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 2 Timothy 2.15. 2 Timothy 2.15. You heard it today. 
James 1.22. Come on. I mean, isn't that ridiculous? The day that you heard the message, the day that you got convicted, you don't change. And then you go, you're, I mean, it's not going back to your old ways. You're staying in your old ways, right? Yes. Because last 297 days, most of you did not change at all. I mean, literally. And the year is going to be over pretty soon. Then don't you want to make difference in your life? Don't you want to change? I mean, aren't you sick and tired of every day being the same? Like, ah, school, work, you know, friends or whatnot, social media, and here comes another day. You're same. You're just a little baby Christian or you're a mature Christian who's going back to your baby ways and just not living a fruitful Christian life. It's how you finish that counts. It's not how you start. You know, as Christians, it's a marathon, and we have our ups and downs. So there's going to be times when you neglect to study, but it shouldn't be every single day. It shouldn't be majority of the time since you got saved. If it has, then you have to get right with the Lord. You have to confess, get right with the Lord. You got to hit the book. It's like people who has you know, important exam coming up. So they haven't studied for even a single minute and test is tomorrow. And then they're just trying to cram everything and cram everything and cram everything in, right? And they get something out of it, right? You don't have to be that person, right? You know, when your days come up, you don't know when, right? I don't know when, you know? But when Lord comes back, you don't want to be that person, right? Oh, man, I should have hit the book more. I should have studied the book more. I should have, you know, you know, man, done more with the Word of God. I should have really, really, you know, meditated in the Word of God. I should have memorized more verses. Then, as a workman, you know, how should you study, right? You know, then we got this point out of the way. As Christian, as a Christian workman, you must study. It's not if and buts. If you haven't been studying, you have been sinning. You have been disobeying God. Simple as that. Yes. And which means many of us, you and I, for last 297 days this year, we have to think about every single day and think about how many days we actually study the Word of God. If you haven't, you've got some time to spend with the Lord. Long time to spend with the Lord. You study the Word of God by what? You know, by comparing scripture with scripture. So many people, whether you're here, whether you're listening to the word of God, one thing is that you don't need to go anywhere else to study the word of God. You have the King James Bible, and you have, you know, Pastor Jin Kim, Pastor Shrive, you know, Pastor Senior Kim, everyone in our YouTube channel. You could just go and reference, search by certain topics. You don't have to go anywhere else. Don't be that person who goes to various websites and trying to get as much knowledge as possible, which is junk. Right. It's like this. And I, I, I like a good pie, you know, lemon meringue pie. I just want lemon meringue, okay? I don't want you to put in, you know, what's the bad one? A durian in there. I don't want you to put in, like, some other foul smelling, right? I don't want like, you know, what is, what's another foul smelling food? Blue cheese? Oh yeah, a cheesecake is pretty good, but you know, maybe not blue cheese or whatnot, you know. Or spoiled milk, okay? Or rotten egg. Yes. I don't want you to make my pies with rotten eggs and spoiled milk mixed. But. When you are listening to all this junk from the other side, you're not helping yourself. When you are just trying to enjoy lemon meringue, man, you're eating rotten egg, you're drinking spoiled milk, and what happens? You become sick, and you become crazy. And you don't want to be that crazy cuckoo out there 
who believes in everything and who accepts everything. Amen. Especially as a babes in Christ, for some of you who's gotten saved not too long ago, or some of you who's gotten saved but who hasn't done anything, and it's time, and if you realize that you recognize that I need to be doers of the word, now I need to grow in the word of God, then stick to our YouTube channel and just study the word of God. Don't try to get any other knowledge out there. It's going to just mess you up. You study by comparing scripture with scripture, you know, noticing similitudes and contrasts, right? And this is most important, constant repetition. Constant repetition. You know, in order to study well, you need repetition. You have to do it over and over and over and over. You have to do it today. You have to do it tomorrow. You have to do it day after tomorrow. Over and over and over. How do teachers teach young kids? Repetition, repetition, repetition. You know, for some, few repetitions work. For others, many repetitions are needed, right? But Anybody, every child can learn and grow by repetition. Important study, you know, behavior. Then you have to study by comparing scripture with scripture, contrasting similitudes and contrasts, and number one, by repetition. Then you grow. Like, okay, I need milk to grow, get my bones stronger then I have to drink it every day. And I can't drink like 10 liters at once and expecting that it will make me feel good or it will make me strong for the next 10 years. No, you do it every single day. That's why you have daily intake. Anytime you see some you know, dietary supplement, just take one pill or two pill a day. Because if you take five, six, 10, you know, something bad is gonna happen to you. So you have to make it a daily repetition and secondly, when it comes to being a Christian workman, you know, you must study. Secondly, you must be approved by God. And how do you get approved by God? Not by your friends, okay? Don't, don't be that person, you know. I'm approved by God because, you know, he said, she said I'm doing good. No, don't listen to it, right? You know. You don't get approved by God by people or the you know, worldly standard. You get approved by God, well, how? By doing his will, by obeying his commandment. Don't try to get your approval from other people. Like, don't come next week and start telling people, you know, I'm, I'm getting A when it comes to studying the Word of God. Why? Seven out of seven days, I studied. And the next person goes, you know what? At least I'm passing. You know, I did four out of seven. And the next person goes, you know what? No comment for me. I don't like you guys. And then they get discouraged. And then that's how it becomes with you. Very important. If you're not be approved by God, don't try to get be approved by others. And especially, don't let this knowledge puff you up. Yeah. You know, if, if knowledge grows as you study more, you become more of a doer than someone who looks down on people, right? Now you have more charity. You show more charity by action, right? You show more charity by, you know, loving the lost souls out there more. Why? Because you study and you study. And last thing, what? A workman must be able to rightly divide the word of truth. And that's very important. You, know? you have to make, make sure and understand that you, know, you have to divide this word. Not everything's same. Salvation planes are different. That's why they're dispensationalism, right? You know, there's things applicable for different periods of time. You know, things that happen in the Old Testament, you know, that things happening, going to happen in tribulation, it's not going to work in the, you know, grace time right now. You know, so you have to understand that these applications apply at different periods of time. Then you're rightly dividing the word of truth. Then you could actually be a little happy, be joyous, and 
knowing the fact that I obeyed at least this commandment today, study to show thyself approved unto God. Something that you and I have failed many times last 297 days. But guess what? You and I get right with the Lord. The Lord is God of many, 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 many chances, right? Thank you. If the Lord doesn't come back, we still have 68 days remaining this year. Think about it. 68 days is a lot, yes. right? 68 days. And I don't want you to just pass, you know, doing 34 days, right? Yeah, man, try to get A. You want to be excellent for the Lord. Yes. Amen. I mean, don't you want to be an A student in the Lord's class? Yes. I mean, if you haven't gotten A in all your life, this is the time. Yeah. <laughs> this is the time you actually have a chance to get an A. Amen. Or if you haven't gotten A for a long time, this is the time. Right? If you haven't gotten A from the Lord ever, this is the time. Yeah. Man, 68 days remaining. Well, let's see. Let me do some math for you. Yeah, so you got to do about at least 62 days. So 62 days out of 68 days you study, you know, you get A. Which means, you know, I mean, nothing to be prideful about, but you should be joyful that, man, I'm doing something right, right? At least, you know, I'm not being just a hearer, I'm becoming a doer. Maybe I could be used by God. And little by little, you know, you're going to grow. Little by little, you're going to get closer to the Lord. Little by little, you're going to be more doers of the word. Little by little, man, you're going to appreciate this word more and more and more. And you realize how precious the ministry of Dr. Ruckman was. How precious all of these Bible-believing ministries are out there in this world. Why? Because they stand for this word. And you cannot realize it. You cannot quote-unquote, experience it, and you cannot, you know, understand that joy unless you get into the book and unless you don't study every day. Let's pray. Dear Father, thank you for the Word of God. Pure Word of God, you have preserved perfect Word for us, KJV 1611. Lord God, but we be come before you, Lord. We neglect it, Lord. I mean, we are at day 297, but how many days have we actually studied, Lord? Help us to get right with you. Help us to realize, you know, what kind of sorry Christians that we've been, especially when it comes to the scriptures. Help us to hit the book. Help us to get into the scriptures. Help us to make it our daily obedience to you instead of disobedience to you, Lord. Help us to just study, Lord, and study and study. Let it just stay in our heart, in our brains. You know, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee, Lord. Help us just memorize, just study, and not just be the person where we become prideful because of our knowledge puffs up, but become doers of the word, Lord. Lord God, we put Pastor Shrive, you know, in our prayers, Lord. Please be with him and heal him, Lord, according to your will, Lord God. And I pray that anybody else, you know, who's going to do physical ailments, Lord God, please be with each one. And during this, you know, crazy times, Lord, protect everyone from devil's attacks, Lord. Help, Lord, please fill us with the Holy Ghost on a daily basis and help us to get closer to you. Help us to grow in the Word of God and help us to study. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Thank you, everyone.